Valley Connection is brought to you by RPS Video Productions. Welcome to this edition of the Valley Connection, a monthly show where we spotlight our Valley's issues, concerns, and events. I'm Nancy Lopez. And I'm Cesario Hernandez. And Nancy, already back to school time. I know. It goes quicker and quicker every summer. Oh, and every summer, hotter and hotter. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this was a bad one. <laughs> this was. <laughs> well, we've got a great show planned for you. And first off, I am out at the Hemet Museum that's right there at the corner of State Street and Florida Avenue at the old Hemet mm -hmm. Depot station. And I was out there with our local historian, Rob Lindquist, learning all sorts of fascinating facts about Hemet. And then Alan Borders had a very fun fundraising event just locally. That's right, a very important one too. This was a fundraising event for the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund. And what it's set up to do is to honor our fallen Hemet and San Jacinto soldiers in Washington, D.C., and Alan's going to tell us all about that in his piece. And then I got to sit down with Susan Watson, who is the Executive Director for the San Jacinto Chamber of Commerce, and we got to talk about local business, the economy, all those fun things. Oh, a lot of things to talk about, so you're going to want to stay tuned because we've got that and a lot more coming up right after this. Welcome back. Cesaria, so, there is so much local history right here in our valley. Oh, yes, there is. And we got to go out and look at some of it out there at the Hemet Museum. Hi, I'm out at the Hemet Depot today, located at the corner of State and Florida Avenue, right in downtown Hemet, and I am surrounded by all sorts of interesting things from Hemet's past. Joining me now is Rob Lindquist, president of the Hemet Heritage Foundation. And Rob, let's start off today by talking a little bit about the depot. All right, Cesaria. The depot, this one is the second depot. Actually, the, there was probably a, a, a very early depot. The first really significant depot was built in 1906. And it was just a little bit northeast of where we are today on the other side of State Street along what's called the, the uh, Flatiron, uh, near the Flatiron building there. It's a diagonal road that goes to Harvard Street. And this one was built in 1913. And this is the freight house. And the freight house was moved from the old depot here. And this was a remarkable structure. And it was ideal, uh, at least <laughs> from the standpoint of, of its association as much as anything. But it also gave us a good uh, a structure in which to house our museum artifacts and our archival uh, displays. Well, it certainly is an ideal location, my goodness. Let's talk about some of your favorite pieces of the collection. Well, this is an old-time telephone switchboard, and the uh, switches and connections were made with these jacks, and the woman spoke, or the woman operator spoke through this little, uh, this little microphone, which is almost like a little horn. It's an electronic microphone, very early. Well, I know that a lot of the pieces here in the museum relate to the Native American culture that we have here and also oh, yeah. to, the, the, to the railroads. 
that went through here. Railroads, a, ma a Native American culture, the early farming communities, uh, the agricultural enterprises that were uh, offshoots of that, including the packing house and the uh, and the uh, uh, all the the storage buildings and and structures that were uh, part of Old Hemet that were involved with the uh, with the harvesting and the processing of crops. Well, I know that this is one of your favorite pieces here. Let's talk just a oh, moment wow. about this. Yeah, this one. This one's amazing. This is a uh, a bicycle, and it's uh, it's uh, an, an American Rambler. I looked it up uh, and did a little research on it, uh, but it was on the Rawson Ranch southwest of Hemet, and it is an early safety bicycle. It's built in 18. There it was constructed in uh, uh, in 1891 or 92. Wow. And now, this is a wonderful piece here, too, Rob. This has, Saboba has so much history here in oh, our yeah. valley. Oh, yeah. And we have a special section devoted just to them. Mm -hmm. Well, some of these pictures here, these are archival. They're just precious. Uh, one in the, in the center is of uh, Ramona Lubo, uh, who is uh, the, uh, uh, ma a member of the Kawia tribe up in, the, up in Anza. And uh, she passed away, I think, in the early 1920s. Uh, and she was the counterpart in Helen Hunt Jackson's story uh, of the uh, Ramona and Alessandro, of and of which course, you're very familiar. And we also have all and, of the Ramona memorabilia and, back here too. Yes, and also these wonderful uh, Indian Oyas. Uh, this one uh, came through the Egan family, from the Donald Egan family. This was uh, found in the mountains east of Hemet uh, in, uh, just after World War II. And uh, it's a water, uh, a water storage Oya, and it's, the size of it is just tremendous. Uh, this was just recently acquired. It shows that our, that our displays are not static, and we, we continually collect new items. Uh, just amazing uh, that these things survived. This is a pestle from a, from a mortar, uh, and there are uh, such things as this is a little mortero for a, a mortar a grinding rock that uh, has had lots and lots of loving use by some grandmother in, in the Indian tribes many, many, many years ago. Uh, we have a very good collection of Indian baskets. Uh, these are of the California style, the southwestern style, and uh, some of them are Kawia, some of them are Luiseno, some of them are from other places. But the most in amazing characteristic of these, particularly the ceremonial baskets, uh, is their weave. Uh, the weaving on these baskets is so intricate and so beautiful. The designs are magnificent and uh, they're remarkable in that uh, it properly woven and, and done by a master, you can actually put water in them and they will not leak. Wow. Yeah. Well, Rob, real quick, tell our viewers, what are your days and times of operation out here? Our, our days and times are Saturday through Sunday. We're closed on Mondays and it's from 11 to 3 uh, daily and we have a docent here and we welcome anyone who wants to come in and look at the museum. It's very eclectic, there are all kinds of things to look at, practical things, very historic things, lots of pictures, some early maps, some early broad view photographs of the valley so you understand how the valley has really transited from a largely agricultural valley to a pretty busy place with lots and lots of houses and people. Well, thank you so much You're for all welcome, of your information. Sorry, and folks, it's a pleasure. Please get on out here and check out all of the amazing displays that they have. We're going to be right back with more of the Valley Connection right after this. White Feather Investigations has been serving Southern California since 2002. We are a success-oriented agency and are experience-driven with a documented track record of positive results. By using advanced investigative technology and surveillance techniques specifically developed by our company, we give our clients the best possible outcome while still working within their budget. White Feather Investigations, uncovering deception and seeking the truth for you. Welcome back to the show. Now, Nancy, let's go out and about with Alan Borders. Most of us have visited or have heard stories about the Vietnam Memorial Wall, dedicated to the honor of the Vietnam veterans, promote national healing, and to educate about the Vietnam War era. Jana Hoon grew up in Hemet and now lives in Maui. She is committed to the Vietnam Memorial Fund National Call for Photos campaign and to the building of the Education Center at the Wall. I had a chance to speak with Jana on how she became so involved. 
Well, one trip to the wall pretty much did it for me. I took an etching, did some research, found a photo of the soldier, and then found out that they were looking for photos for every single one of the soldiers that were killed in Vietnam on that Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall. So I started searching. I was asked by the, uh, once I sent the photo in for the gentleman that I etched, uh, Jan Scruggs, the founder and president of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall, asked me if I could help find the Maui fallen soldiers. And I was happy to do so. It was a true honor and I just, it took me six months but I found all 42 of them and then I started on the Hemet and San Jacinto Boys because I was born and raised in Hemet. The fundraiser was a great success and had a tremendous turnout. Sitting at the same table were two vets who realized they were on the same ship at the same time. They shared with us some of the memories they had during their deployment. I've met two gentlemen that just met each other after 47 years of being apart. How are we doing tonight, guys? Doing one wonderful. Fantastic. Fantastic. It's going great. All right, so where did you gentlemen first meet each other? Actually, we just first met here tonight that we remember. Probably 47 years ago, we were on the same ship in Vietnam. The saltiest ship in the fleet, USS, USS Morton, DD-948. And uh, we, you know, you lose names, you lose track of names and all that after that much time goes by, but we were in the same division. And the odds on this are, you know, he, astronomical. He was a ship serviceman, I was a personnelman that takes care of yeoman work and uh, records and things. And yeah. Same division, S division. Yeah. And so, what do you guys remember about the, the time that you guys spent together on the same ship? Hong Kong. <laughs> A lot, a lot of good and bad. I remember us being attacked the second night we were in the in the uh, Gulf of Tonkin, and uh, you know that's one of the bad times versus the good. But like that, we had a lot of good. Yeah, times. we had a lot of good times. The Philippines and all that, but but in the typhoon weather that we went in with the ships going just going bananas, going up and down sideways, have to walk through it. Having the uniqueness of having one of the one of the best captains we had at that time in, in the service, we'd have uh, we'd have. We'd go fishing off the back of the ship. We'd have steak fries. We have pictures of skiing behind a destroyer. You don't do this kind of stuff in the Navy, but we had a captain that did that. Wasn't that great? What a small world. The Education Center at the Wall will use photos and stories of over 58,000 men and women on the Wall, including six from Hemet, to tell the story of the Vietnam veteran and to educate the future generations on their sacrifices. They're trying to get a photo for every single one, so they've, they've collected over 30,000 photos. We still need to find 28,000 or so photos of the fallen from the Vietnam War, and I know they're out there. We just have to find them, and that's what I'm working on. I'm going to work on the rest of the Inland Empire. Um, a little bit hard from Maui, but I'll, I'll get it done. Yeah. For more information on the National Call for Photos campaign, contact them through their website, buildthecenter.vvmf.org. Welcome to the Patio Plaza, home of the City of San Jacinto Chamber of Commerce. We offer a wide variety of businesses, organizations, and a restaurant to serve you. The Patio Plaza has been locally owned and operated since 1976, centrally located between Menlo and Esplanade, amongst the garden setting. Enjoy the experience of the Patio Plaza. Alexander, this is Linda. We are at the Rona Bowl Courtyard. What's going on, Linda? Well, we have Broadway in the Bowl on Thursday, September 13th, right here in the Ramona Bowl Courtyard. And all the proceeds go to the Rona Bowl because this year we are going to be in the Rose Parade. Very exciting news. What else? That's right. And there's a lot of other stuff going on up here at the Ramona Bowl. So check out the website, RamonaBowl.com. See you soon. Yeah, let's get back to rehearsal. Bye. Bye. See ya. On July 14, 1937, our San Jacinto Valley woke up to the sounds of an engine from a Russian plane that had landed in a pasture in San Jacinto, just off of Cottonwood. 
The Russian pilots attempted a non-stop, long-distance flight over the North Pole from Moscow. The men flew 6,305 miles in 62 hours, breaking the record held by the French. For this 75th anniversary of this historic event, many people came out to celebrate memories and photos along with great speeches on this Russian transporter flight from Moscow to San Jacinto in 1937. The large turnout included 20 plus people who actually were there at this historic event. Some of them signed a replica model airplane that will be displayed at the San Jacinto Museum. There was an estimated 4,000 people that witnessed that event in 1937. Some of those that were attending the 75th anniversary still remember it like it happened yesterday. We also had a chance to speak with two Russians who were taught about the flight during their school years in the Soviet Union. We found out by the internet. We received an email with information and flyer about this event. And we decided to come because uh, when we were a ch ch during our childhood, we read about and learn about this in school, in history books, about this city, about this event. We saw a lot of pictures and we knew about this, but we never can imagine. But then one day we can come and touch this a plane and see this monument with ourselves. That's why we decided to come. And we are very happy that we are here and it was a wonderful event and it's a pleasure to be here, to touch and to um, shake a hand to the people who was here during this day 75 years ago. We'll wrap it up with what has been called a super find in the archives of the old Martin Theater a newsreel of the actual footage made in 1937 of the Russian plane landing. A new non-stop distance record is established as three Russian flyers land in a cow pasture near San Jacinto, California, after a polar flight from Moscow. Their gasoline line leaking, the trio land 600 miles from Moscow, 40 miles south of Los Angeles. The huge single-motored plane was undamaged in landing, though a fuel tank was punctured, spilling what gas was left. Left to right are pilot Gromov, co-pilot Yumashev, and navigator Danilin. They flew a thousand miles further than did Kodos and Rossi in establishing a record in 1933. 62 hours in the air, the flyers claim their only trouble was getting the heavy plane into the air at the Moscow takeoff. Speaking no English, the flyers are under the wing of Consul General Gokum. The second spectacular Russian pole flight in a few weeks, the Soviet having proven the feasibility of the northern air route. Stop by the San Jacinto Museum for more information on this historic event. In recognition of National Employee the Older Worker Week, Goodwill Southern California Workforce and Career Development and Riverside County Office on Aging are pleased to announce the first annual Employment Resource Fair. This public event takes place on Thursday, September 27th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the YMCA J. Simpson Center in Hemet. The Employment Resource Fair offers Hemet and Menifee Valley local residents an opportunity to meet and network with employers and businesses who are currently recruiting candidates. All job seekers will have access to employers, workshops, and employment resources. Job seekers and employers, join us on Thursday, September 27th at the YMCA J. Simpson Center. Lunch will be provided and take advantage of the no-cost health screenings, workshops, and valuable information about your community resources. We'll see you there.
welcome back. I had the opportunity to sit down with Susan Watson, who is the Executive Director for the San Jacinto Chamber of Commerce, and we talked about what is happening locally with our businesses and the economy. Someone who certainly has her finger on the pulse of what's happening in the Valley is none other than the Executive Director for the San Jacinto Chamber of Commerce, Susan Watson. Welcome, Susan. Glad you could be with us. Thank you so much. It's a We're going to start off with, okay, hopefully nothing too bad, but how are some of the businesses doing here in the Valley due to this recession? Oh, they're hanging on by a thread, some of them. But most of them, I feel very confident that they are pushing forward, uh, utilizing what they have and, and basically going to survive mm -hmm. this time. Well, what are some tips for businesses that are struggling? I mean, do you have any ideas or things that might help a business to get through all this? Well, they do have to be creative, mm -hmm. um, go outside their comfort box. Uh, there are so many ways to advertise just by even going to the supermarket, wear your name badge have flyers ready. I mean, you can tap into so many resources just by walking out of your business and talking to your neighbors mm -hmm. uh, in business. It's, it's such a delight to find and get to know the owner of a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you think you're special and they will think you are special. So it's wonderful. So talk it up. Get out there and, yes. you know, word of mouth, I guess, is a, Don't a great Don't be afraid way to, to advertise. advertise yourself. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you are your best form of advertisement. Get out there and, and show excited. the world <laughs> what you're all about. Yeah, that is so true. What kind of complaints do you get from business owners? What things do you hear from them? Well, of course, um, payroll taxes and taxes and property taxes and and it's just sounds like taxes. a lot of taxes. Yeah. Yes, it is. And then when you have your business license every year, and then of course your insurance, and then your health insurance, it's a a burden on small business people today. But overall. Uh, the cities need to be more business friendly. Mm -hmm. When it comes time for their renewal of their, their business license and, and insurance, so they need to be very conscious about spending their dollars, mm -hmm. which is spending our dollars. Right. Speaking of spending dollars, how important is it to shop locally? Oh, it is very important to shop local. The revenue stay here in our town to help fix our roads and to beautify our city, to advertise outside of our cities, to have visitors come in, um, to support our nonprofits that we have here in the valley. The one thing that the chamber does, the San Jacinto Chamber, is once we get dollars, it goes right back out to the businesses to help them be more successful. Why do you think it's important for a business to belong to a chamber? What does a chamber do for these businesses? Money's tight. I'm sure they're watching every dime. Why should they be a member of the Chamber of Commerce? Well, one of our main benefits is to uh, advertise their business to make them more successful. We do events all throughout the year that we give our members uh, free booths to set up and to talk about their business. We do educational luncheons to help support our members that may not be uh, focused on time management and we give them an avenue to research that. We deal highly in SCORE, which is um, That's a great organization, for, yes. by the way. They're it, tremendous. It's, right, it's Counselors for Small Business. Mm -hmm. And we utilize them all the time. Even our chamber utilizes them because we're They're just like everybody knowledge. else. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of benefits to offer businesses to help them get going, more ideas on how to promote their business. Mm -hmm. We always have a venue where they can network and promote their business or special events or nonprofits, whatever they have going, use us to get the word out there. You know, it must be very comforting in a way 
to talk to other business owners, realize, hey, it's not just me going through this. And it's kind of like a support thing, I would think, too, you know, oh, working yes. together and supporting each other. It is. Uh, we just have about 30 seconds left. Um, you have an event that's coming up that we want to oh. talk about just briefly. Yes, it's uh, the San Ysidro Agricultural Festival. This is our second year, and it's September 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. And that's going to be held where? At the Estadillo Mansion. And there's going to be a carnival for the kids. It's all family oriented. Get those families out there. Have fun with your families. It's a wonderful event. Yeah, it's a good time to celebrate. Oh, Hopefully yes. Hopefully it's cooler than Oh, yes. <laughs> thank you so much, Susan, oh, for being you. with us. We'd thank like you to have so you back. Much. Okay, thank you. We'll be right back with more of the Valley Connection. Hi, I'm Roger Schultz, Superintendent President of Mount San Jacinto College. I invite you to look at the programs and services MSJC has to offer the businesses and residents of our 1,700 square mile district. As your community college, we are familiar with the business needs of our communities. We have developed programs tailored to our unique region, helping students become qualified for the jobs you're trying to fill, enhancing current job skills to maintain productivity, and providing employers with a pool of qualified job seekers. MSJC provides the education your staff members need to remain qualified in their jobs or to take their education to the next level through our transfer programs to a four-year university. We offer cutting-edge training with an eye towards the latest trends and technologies to help your business remain competitive and relevant during these dynamic times. Come see what Mount San Jacinto College has to offer you. Welcome back. Now, as we close the show, Nancy, we would like to thank everybody who made this show possible. And please go to our website if you would like to view this show again or see many of our previous shows. And you can do that by going to the website at thevalleyconnection.net. And as we close, we want to have a gentle reminder to please, <laughs> when you're out there shopping, think shop local first. We That's need money right. in our valley. That's right. Keep your tax dollars right here. Also, folks, it is back to school time, as we've already mentioned. Please drive carefully out there. There's going to be a lot more pedestrians, so please drive with care. And thank you for joining us, and please join us next time for more of The, the Valley Connection. Connection.